And the, yeah, and there was a big, big spread. So the second attorney who, through his title work, discovered that his seller didn't currently have ownership, did some due diligence, found me, called me, and said, hey, I think we need to, you know, talk. Has, does, you know, does your short sale lender know about my deal? And they did not. The lender's a big institutional bank, and when I disclosed it to them, not only did they say no, they said absolutely not. They used some expletives. They're like, no way. I mean, what? They, they're, it's impossible. I mean, yes, we're taking a bath, but about, you know, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar difference? No, yeah, that, that's not possible. So I've had two different experiences. Is it a dollar amount? I don't know. It's so subjective. It just depends on the short sale lender. It depends on the disclosure. I think if you disclose it up front, you have a better chance of a negotiator say yes, as opposed to them having to find out on their own. You know, when I went to, the lender was BB&T. When I went to BB&T, I was kind of like, here it is. The red flag already went up because it wasn't disclosed to them. It happened to come through second-hand, third-hand information. Kudos to the other attorney, and I'm sorry the deal didn't go through, and there were some commissions lost and some people were upset. But at the end of the day, you know, it, you know, it's through the lens of ethics that I practice. You know, whether it's, you know, you know um, business, friendships, whether it's, um, you know, anything. You know, sports, you know, if you're ethical and you do good, you don't have to worry about it. Another thing Mike Campbell says is he says, I'm not smart enough to lie. I can't remember all the lies I put out there, you know. So, you know, and I love his little Mikeisms, you know, because they, they just, they, you know, they hit home to me and there's a lot of truth to it. Another ethical consideration that I'm seeing too in short sale transactions is on um, second mortgage payoffs. For some reason, $3,000 has stuck as the amount that second mortgage lenders are going to get. I, have, I think it has to deal with the home affordable foreclosure alternatives and all that kind of MHA and HAMP stuff, which long story, long story short means that if the first mortgage lender allows the second mortgage lender um, $2,000, the government will match and give 1000 for max of 3000 So for some reason in our industry, you're seeing second mortgage lenders who may be offered or, or owed, I'm sorry, $100,000 being offered $3,000. And so they'll accept it because they want to get the deal done, but they try to get creative. And they'll go back to the parties and say, look, off the closing statement, guys, we're going to need another $5,500. So everybody who's gotten the deal that far, you're on the goal line, it's $5,500. Well, certainly we can all come up with $5,500. <coughs> now, the, the, the key is we can't put it on the closing statement because the first mortgage lender is going to want that money. And so what I've seen and what I've been you know, involved in was, number one, a bill of sale where the second mortgage lender required $25,000, the first mortgage lender allowed three. So, wink, wink, we're going to sell you a nice piece of furniture, so, you know, seller to, you know, buyer for, uh, you know, $25,000 coincidentally so that that money could go to pay off the second mortgage lender off the closing statement. Um, since my agents were aware of it and I was aware of it and this buyer was a litigation attorney, a prominent one here in town who I hold to a higher standard, I, I, I shut the deal down. I know it was a great deal, and I know that the lender needed to get rid of it, but I was not going to allow that to happen on my watch. No, I'm sorry. You're not going to do it. You know, same with uh, you know all the agents running around and the seller and the buyer saying, you know, here I've got, you know, let's come up with a 5,500. If it's not on the closing statement, if it's not transparent, if it's not under the light of day, I don't want it to happen. But not with me. There's other attorneys that'll do it all day long. That's their business. I'm not going to judge them. I just tell you how I do my business, you know, and, and do I lose deals over it? Yeah, I do. I dare say that people will probably know, know me as the guy that will probably shut it down. But also, I don't want to get a call from the GBI. I was giving another talk, and this one agent in the middle of it raised her hand, and she said, you know, Steve, regarding your flop deals, she said, you're so right. If it doesn't feel right, you probably need to walk away from it. She said, I did exactly that. I won't go into all the details, but she was involved in a flopper. And she said, uh, she said, I just didn't feel good about it. I left. Two weeks later, the GBI called me and wanted to ask me questions about this particular investor, this particular you know, flop you know, transaction to gain ammunition to go after an investor. And remember, it's not only it's not investors. I'm investor friendly. It's not just sellers, you know, that are in a distressed situation. It's not buyers who are just you know trying to buy real low so they can sell high immediately. 
I mean, you look at the story, it's very subjective, and you figure out, okay, does it make sense? Do you feel good about it? Give it the smell test. If it doesn't, then you walk away. So, you know, that's my two and three cents on short sales. And I know it's not relevant to a lot of what you guys do, but at the end of the day, it's what I do, and it's the stories I can tell you so that if you are encountering a, you know, a, a, an ethical consideration, whether you're you know, a, a psychologist, a physician, you know, my dad's a doctor, he's asked to do stuff you know, that's illegal you know, at times, and he says no, he's a plastic surgeon, you know, people want to want the insurance company to pay it. So they ask him, you know, well, if, you know, if I have a, a deviated septum, you know, can I get my nose job paid for? You know, um, I, I've got a problem with my back, doc. I'm not going to go into details about what the women want, but, you know, I mean, people are, whether you're a physician, whether you're a psychologist, whether you're in the HVAC, whether, you know, you're a realtor, you know, no matter what you do, just do it the right way. Um, that way, you don't deplete your family and yourself, you know, what I call resources, reputation, and, you know, your livelihood. And that carries over to other things, uh, you know, as well. I mean, it has to be disclosed. It will come out, it will find you, and you don't want to be that guy or gal. Um, and that, well, uh, let me show you this special stipulation real quick in the material. If you're in real estate, it might come in handy. And this was in my email to the other attorney and the, uh, and the selling agent as part of the agreement. And um, I think with my story, you'll be able to follow along, but I put, seller acknowledges and agrees to provide a buyer within 10 days from the binding agreement date one of the following. One, written approval from XYZ title, agreeing to indemnify and hold harmless buyer from any loss resulting from not giving full disclosure of the second transaction to the short sale lender, or here's the simple way, full disclosure of the second transaction with written acknowledgement of the same by the short sale lender. In the event this contingency is not completed, the buyer at their option may terminate this agreement and the earnest money shall be immediately refunded to the buyer. Uh, now, that attorney and I, we debated for 30 minutes. He never called me back. And I asked him, you know, uh, who at the title company said it was okay? He never responded. Now, I'm not saying it's an admission of guilt. Maybe he was done with me. Maybe I'm too hard-headed for him. I wasn't seeing his, you know, side of things clearly. But we, we never followed through. Yes? I don't have what you're reading. Uh, you don't have that. We'll, we'll pass it out here at the end. I, 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 it's a much bigger proof than I anticipated. I made 30 copies. I'm glad to see that we ran out. But I will make you copies before you go. Oh, Steve, here's a couple of more extras. Oh, a copies. couple of extras. Here, we got some extras. Thank you for raising your hand. Um, let's see what else. Do I have a little bit more time? Yes. Just something you recommend to go on all short sale closings, or is that something that just when you know that it's going to be a flop? Just when it's going to be a flop, where there's not going to be full disclosure to the short sale lender of the second transaction. And where I've read where the realtors and the closing attorneys have gotten in trouble again is where there's concealment, so this takes care of that if it's fully disclosed, and there's been a manipulation of the BPO. If you hear of anybody, whether it's a seller, an investor, and they're manipulating the BPO, they, you know, they, they can put a tarp on the roof. Um, I won't say some of the other things they do, but they create nasty smells in the house to make it look like there's a major issue with the plumbing and so forth. Um, and then, miraculously, you know, after you know the, the BPO is done, all that stuff's lifted. The next appraiser comes in on the second transaction, and voila, you just gained fifty thousand dollars to the detriment of the short sale lender who's trying to you know, function under fair market value to mitigate their loss, to ultimately get back on their feet so they can start lending again. So, y'all have any questions, concerns? Don't tomato me. For, you know, I, I'm, just, I'm just a lawyer up here trying to make a living, you know, the honorable <laughs> way. <laughs> yes, go ahead, Jeff. You have to, so it's not to pay all the rest of them. Okay. But in a short sale that I'm involved in, where the broker listed it at a price, mm -hmm. the seller, the owners, mm -hmm. agreed, we all signed the document, mm -hmm. but the lender mm -hmm. of the owner mm -hmm. comes in and says, oh no, I don't like this, I'm not getting enough money. Right. So now they're jacking the price up mm -hmm. to the 